So I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go all Mister Rogers on spoiler in time. Uh oh. This, this week. I, I don't know what that means. Are you gonna take off your your? Oh yes. See, he's changing the clothes. He's gonna put on his casual sweater. I love it. <laughs> Nicely done, sir. I love props. <laughs> It's a beautiful day for cutting cords. A beautiful day for wireless. God, you'd be an awesome Mr. Rogers, Tom. (laughs) Hi, neighbor. Uh, All right, so what do you want to begin with first? We should probably finish House of Cards first because more people will have watched that, I think, and then then do True Detective. Okay. Can Can you, do you know in your mind where episode one ends? Of? Of of True Detective? True Detective, yeah. All right. I mean, I, I mean, true, basically, all we'll talk about is the exposition, and and the only thing I wanted to talk about from from episode two is is a thematic spoiler, which you get instantly, and I just thought was a cool conceit. Um. All right, man. You want to kick us off, Tom? Hey, everybody! It's spoiler in time, which means we're going to spoil your time by talking <laughs> about television shows the two shows we're going to spoil today were watched entirely on the internet although one of them did require some kind of subscription uh the first we will finish up our thoughts on house of cards so if you have not watched all of house of cards you're going to want to fast forward to the other part of spoiler in time or skip the episode altogether because the second thing we're going to talk about is episode one of true detective yeah man uh speaking of which uh, andrew had have you watched all of house of cards did you finish season two yes i did okay so i was probably the laggard in in this this particular group um with your kids and your family yeah so they, they... here's the thing when we get when we get done with house of cards if you're watching the video i will i will hold my gun out and to indicate we've moved on to true detective that's good that's good and then shoot yourself in the foot for audio folks just maybe we'll put the time code in the yeah, that's fine. We'll do our best. Hey, uh, okay, so I, you know what? To be honest, I want to go second. I, I feel like I'm going to say the more upsetting things on this. Who wants to talk about it? Uh, should we let our guest have the opportunity yes. to go first, Andrew, if you'd like? So we're, we're talking about House of Cards? Yeah. Yes. So uh, my question to you two, uh, either of you guys ever watched the original British series? I no, watched I the first the first of the three episodes. Uh I loved, loved, loved the British series. And the thing that I was curious about when they were going to do this one was, and I, you know, with some hesitations, where, where was this going to go? And I, I have, I was so pleased with season two as just a complete experience that my experience was, I just was so, it reminded me of, I think like the second or third season of Battlestar Galactica or something, where I just felt like, man, this is like, I got my beginning, my middle, the end, they set the stage for the next thing. I was, I can't remember being this pleased with, a season in a while. Wow. I felt empty at the end of this season. I I was with you, Andrew, through most of the season. I, I, I felt like I was getting my beginning, middle, and end. I felt like things were wrapping up from the previous season. I did feel, and I talked to Brian about this last week, that some of the stakes didn't seem to be high enough because he already became vice president, but I thought I was going to get more stakes. And at the mm-hmm. end, I got the stakes with Rachel, and 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 her murder, uh, not her being murdered, but her murdering. Um, what was what was guys? Stamper, Stamper, yeah. Stomper is what I kept calling him. Um, who's the mascot for the Oakland A's? I didn't want Frank to become president at the end of this season. I was like, it's got to be something else. There's got to that still has to be a stake that is raised for the third season. But he becomes president. I, I feel I guess- like there's a way they could have done it that I would have been excited about what's going to happen now that he is president but i feel like too many things are dangling that aren't looming they're not important enough right i guess my having watched the british series and knowing the beginning the middle and the end and being curious like okay how are they going to pace this things and having an idea and it's very different but there are certain elements and you start to go oh i get it this is that storyline or this is there I guess that sort of comes in to me where I'm like, okay, I like the pacing here because I know what's next and why they needed to do this here. And maybe if I knew what was coming in the third season, I'd feel the same way. But right now it just feels like, well, Frank wasn't as intimidating. Uh, We got a lot more out of Claire, and I really enjoyed Claire's storyline. But Frank ended up getting to be president. 
and now they, there's some some threats in the offing, but they're not any they're not the worst things that Frank's ever had to deal with. So I don't understand what the tension is going to be for season three. All right, Brian, we we should let you. All right, let all right. Well, what you he, felt he, here, the here's the thing. And by season. the way, I I could not agree more with Andrew's assessment that this was more like Battlestar Galactica seasons two and three, which was to me the worst two seasons of Battlestar Galactica because the first season came out hitting hard, had nothing to lose, and just just went and drove. And it was once they had this massive success, it was like they put the brakes on everything and say, whoa, 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 we got to figure out a way to stretch this out. And so the first thing they did on Battlestar Galactica was start diffusing tension of like, well, let's take this and put that on pause and chop this out and reduce worry about that. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm confused. The season ends with him as the effing president. I mean, it's like, it's like if that's not Look, a scene change. No, it's uh, here's the thing. The season ends with him being president and strangely me not caring. That's what's okay. extraordinary to me. I wanted this to be Empire Strikes Back. What I got was Temple of Doom. And that's fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be watching Temple of Doom. It's better than nothing at all. But but it is not a it is not a game changing thing. And a right, few fundamental problems that they had. Number one, uh, uh, they uh, had the opportunity to do what uh, what the shield did, which was have the noose be ever present around his neck and watch you, watch it get tighter at times and looser at times, but it was always there. Instead, they turn around and in three episodes they just push the the noose into a train and and everyone's in jail and and there is no noose. And why are you still worried about that? And 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 that to me was a missed opportunity because to watch he he created a much more powerful enemy here outside of Tusk than he's had before, a much more capable enemy than he's had before, and that. That seems to be overlooked. Uh, no, you are wrong about that. Tusk is not as 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 dangerous as a murder charge. A murder no, charge not, no, is I'm the bigger more, deal. No, the, no, not Tusk. No, Tusk got boring. I'm saying there's a. That's not the enemy I'm talking about. He created a new enemy here now in in this year in this season two. It's much more dangerous than Tusk and much more dangerous to other people because it's somebody who's playing outside the rules now. Wait, who? The hacker. Oh geez, that the Deus S Dushika. Who cares? That's, well, that was the least interesting. Why don't you have? Why don't you have an angel come down and be all like, oh, "I'm here to slay politicians. You better watch out for me." Uh, but, it's like when when you come out of nowhere with with a fantasy of someone being able to just find anything anyway, and I know all your secrets or whatever. To me, that just deflates everything. I just lost. I, I that that was that was one of the least interesting aspects for me. I guess what I'm saying is like we're we're the that he is what I'm saying is that what do we have now in season two we had the tusk thing back and forth battle got boring to me I admit that but I'm saying is now we have I want to know what happens for this guy now that he's effing president now that he's president now it gets curious to me because we've been watching the guy have this ambition is he going to be a danger to himself what happens he's now the most powerful person in the world he has nuclear weapons what does this sociopathic guy do in this situation to me that's fascinating i want yes. to see that, that and, and second well, is that if, now that he's creating a turning this towards china more i would i would be more more in with you andrew like okay now he's made a real enemy right the entire the entire chinese government is 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 not they're playing for keeps they're they're not messing around they are no tusk the guy with cashew I don't feel like is is that significant of an enemy yet. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm overlooking stuff. But it feels like something Frank has dealt with before. He can evade that sort of thing. And there's no evidence of him killing Zoe. If the, at least they've convinced me of that in this in this episode, that there really isn't a shred of anything to tie him to that. So what is what is the threat looming over Frank? So so uh, well, well th th there are two things, and and it is that release of pressure that most disappointed me because um, uh, number one, uh, the the thing that was difficult for me was to watch. Okay, follow me here. There was a good stretch of four or five episodes where you saw Frank under Underwood and Claire acting very un. Underwood. Uh, if, if Frank is touched because he sees a community theater reject pretending to be his great great grandfather, and so he buries his class ring, which uh, I guess is a symbol of him being a badass. So you watch him touching at his naked exposed finger, getting kicked around, reacting to stuff after the fact, and and just basically uh, clumsily flump uh, trying to stay alive. But then all of a sudden he gets to be president at the end. And I did like the fact that there was a moment where it's like, hey, I made you another class ring, puts it on, and then he gives us the nasty look and he wraps his finger on there. That was a great moment. But but here's the thing. One of two scenarios. 
the show has always been that he is confessional with the audience. And we are looking in the mind of a sociopath. Either he genuinely had no clue what he was doing and ping-ponged around reacting to stuff for five episodes straight, in which case, that's not House of Cards, that's not why I tune in. Or he deliberately lied to us, his confident and viewer and in and, and, and the audience, because again, he always looks and gives us the wink and the nod and lets us know that this is all happening for a reason. Or in in this in the other scenario, he lied to us, in which case, that's also not House of Cards, and I'm disappointed. That's that that's my biggest beef with this season. So so I, there, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm not I'm not that far off from you, uh, Brian. Uh, Andrew, you it sounds like you enjoyed this the most out of the three of us. Uh, yeah, and I guess you know everybody watches it for different reasons, and you know, and and who we think of the character, what we think of a you know certainly has a you know thing for it. I, you know, a cub reporter wasn't that exciting of a thing of an interest to me. Looking at what's happened, you know, what was the price that he paid for this? He ends season two, his right hand guy, his fixer, presumably dead. So now he's in a situation where he's got the most important job in the world. The guy that he relied on is now gone. There was a cost there, and the certain cost to have there. He's created a new kind of enemy now that will not play by the same rules as the other people there. Maybe it could have been done better. I don't know. But I look at that, and I go, that's what changed it. This is how the paradigm changed it for me. Is like, this is what made it different now is, great, now he's president. Now he's got a different kind of enemy he has to deal with. But both that scale, as you brought up, like globally, his enemies are going to be other foreign powers. And the price that he had to pay. Yeah, and I I feel like the prices that he is likely to pay have to do with Rachel and Stomper in the next season. Stamper. <laughs> and sorry, Stamper. Um and I just don't I don't feel like that's something that that you know can okay, that's a loose analog uh for the Clinton administration and who is the guy that was found dead in the park? Yeah. Vince Foster. Yeah, uh, Vince yeah, Foster. Vince Foster. And so that's how that's going to play out. Uh, I don't, I'd say I don't see it as that, but okay. So I guess the big question is what do you want to see out of a season three in this case? Do, do you, cause it sounds to me, Andrew, like you would love this to be like a next level nuclear showdown type of game where he brings that same level of nasty politics to the global stage. I certainly think it's going to be, you know, when you watch this ends where, you know, he's averted a crisis with China you know, by doing some backroom dealing and you get the idea that that's the level he's going to play with. And now he's going to have to, you know, as Tom points out, is this going to be a Vince Monster? His first crisis is going to be, you know, why is his, you know, why is his right hand guy dead? And the inquiries into that, what is he going to do to try to shut that down as a president and only bring the attention? Meanwhile, is he going to generate, is he going to go to war with somebody to divert attention? Do, which do, is, do you think that well, that's, that scene, that starts to become interesting if it's that kind of situation where he go, does brinksmanship with China or something. Do, do you think that the overall big, I guess, and again, this was something that disappointed me about season two was three episodes, or at the first episode, if you were asking me to place a bet on what I thought would, would be happen, I'd say like, well, if we extrapolate what happened the first time, we'll see him do a bunch of stuff, but in the end we'll be surprised because his thirst for power was greater than we ever thought. So maybe at the end he becomes president and it turns out that's exactly what happens. Uh, what, what do you suppose? Yeah, but that's not a, but I'm saying that's, we know he's going to get there at some point and the sooner we get there, that then it gets more interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess more interesting, maybe surprising it, less. So like, I'm assuming the third season will be about him on the campaign trail, 2016 or whatever. Is that is that what you guys think? I think yeah, I think we're going to see the Ford administration play out. We all know how exciting those years were. <laughs> I, could be Nixon, you know. It could be LBJ. We just saw Nixon. I mean, we just had Nixon. That was season two. We had we had the we, smoking we gun Nixon and the president had to resign. Again, I, I think that we didn't have Nixon in power. And, and the idea of what happens here, our LBJ, and look at the escalation in Vietnam. Are we going to get us? I'm saying is it. I don't I think that the I don't think that they're trying to do a complete, you know, parody of the past. I think that might inspire some things. But uh, I, I guess I don't I don't think he's Carter. You know, I think this guy is anything. He's he's Nixon, you know. And so 
I guess I guess that's just be, it. Is, that, is we the first season we saw a lot of Nixon, but I gotta say the second season we saw a lot of Carter. We saw a lot wait, of him. Wait, wait, wait. Can I say that? But like I didn't see Nixon in the first season. I mean, knowing historically like how Nixon campaigned and what he did is is that I mean. Nixon the campaigner or whatever is a different guy than Nixon the president. Right, uh, yeah, I, the I mean president. Nixon the archetype. Like, like. No, okay. Yeah, I'm I, thinking yeah. administration wise. We had Agnew in the first season and Nixon in the second. But you're right, the president was not a Nixonian type president. Uh, so maybe it's more of like, what would have happened if Ford would have been the president that had to resign in scandal and Nixon took over, unelected? Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. Um, uh, first of all. Before the hate starts coming in, because I could tell it's gonna, going to. Let me say, I liked it, and I'm glad I watched it, but I was not nearly as enthralled. It really, the, the best parallel is uh, Temple of Doom. Like, I was glad I saw Temple of Doom. It was awesome seeing Indiana Jones again and having another crazy adventure, but it was not this game-changing mind blower the way Empire Strikes Back was after uh, after Star Wars. And that's actually typical for a second act. And if this is considered as, as no, a second no, but that's act. just it. Is it's not the second act is when you get beat down and you think all's lost, and instead the second act he won the Super Bowl, and and he didn't even win it with like any way that made sense. He just sort of ping ponged around and said, "You and your wife need therapy," and then all of a sudden he was president. Like that's that's what was unsatisfying that's all it takes, to me. Man. What's that? I said that's all it takes. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I liked it too. I, I enjoyed it. I think it was really only the end when I'm like, oh, and now he's president. Where do we go from here? And I don't, I wanted some clearer pointers towards where we go. And it, granted, the whole Rachel Stamper situation is obviously the thing we're going to start the season with. But like last season, we thought Zoe was going to be the big threat we would start the season with. And that didn't play out. So I'm hoping there'll be a twist early on in season three. I mean, I'm hoping there won't just because like if that's the precedent they set where it's like they set up a threat and then just bat it away in the first two or three episodes. That'd well, but be... it, as long as they replace it with a bigger threat. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Frank gets shot. See, now dies. you're talking, man. That would be that would be some surprising television. <laughs> All right. Uh, talk, talk, talk to me about True Detective. You only watched yes, the first episode. Moving to True Detective now. There's your symbol. Uh, yeah, and so I didn't realize that you were going to watch it for this week, and I hadn't. Uh, I, I kept thinking, like, oh, maybe I'll watch one just to get ahead, and I wish I would have now. Uh, but I squeezed in an episode this afternoon, and uh, wow, what, I had to keep reminding myself that I was doing work to do to you know, like I I I, f I felt too guilty because I was enjoying it. I felt like this episode was a really twisted, cool take on Twin Peaks with Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson reminded me so much of this guy I grew up with. Uh, just, you know, the small town attitude, the professionalism uh, with the wife and the sort of like, come on, guys, I'm, you know, everybody else is weird but me and I got the biggest dick. Uh, didn't like the character so much as just like knew him. And the Matthew McConaughey character, I have to admit, I'm still, I still haven't wrapped my head around what he is supposed to be. I do wish the um, I would have kept up with the VHS look on the interviews, but I think I understand why they did it because they're moving us towards the future. Uh, I feel like Andrew has the most informed perspective of all of us because you're all the way caught up, right, Andrew? Yes. Okay. So let me let me just say what my impressions are, and you can either say that 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 they are correct, extrapolating through the rest or not. Uh, number one, visually, it's. It is an achievement. I am shocked at how much more I like this show after I watched it. Like, like while I was watching it, I was like, wow, there's a lot of nothing happening. Wow, I could tell they're going for some, some I, I don't want to say cheap, but some, some powerful visual pops. Wow, this is Mordor if there was, you know, uh, 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 trains and swamps as far as the eye could see, you know? Uh, but the moment it was over... That imagery is so sticky. The acting is so haunting. The visuals are so good. Like, I, 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 I don't know how in love with the story I am. And I'm certainly not in love with any of the characters. But they are all haunting. And they're so haunting, 
I deeply, deeply respect it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's one of those things that, that, you know, as we get more into the idea of binge watching and other ways of consuming stuff, and that's another question too, is like, you know, I'd love to know like, like back, back a house of cards, you know, who, if you watch them spread out or you watch it all at once or whatever. And with, with this first couple episodes, hard for me to, you know, get, I wasn't in love with it. And then I stayed around and then finding out the connections to the Lovecraft mythos and stuff and all these other crazy elements that, uh, indirectly through, uh, the King in yellow. I, I all of a sudden I'm now like, Oh, there's a whole nother layer here that I have to sit back and look at the whole thing to appreciate what's going on. And I think once it's over, I'm going to go watch probably start it from the beginning because to pick up on all the things that I didn't realize, you know, that were little throwaways or maybe here thing there and now go, holy crap, this is, it's that idea of telling this eight hour story that you have to watch the full eight hours. And that's one of the difference between television and movies. If, if I can get you into the movie theater, I can spend the first 15 minutes doing whatever I want as long as I win you over at the end. Television, if I don't get you in that first five minutes, that first minute, I don't, I lose you forever. And here we have, you know, HBO can come in and say, listen, we're going to put up eight episodes of this thing and people may not get into the first two or three episodes, but we think enough people will talk about how good it is that people will go back and watch it, that it'll justify it. It's like a book. A book is the same way. Like you don't have to hook people in the first few pages of a book if you've got enough people telling folks, yeah, if you stick with it, it gets a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell oh. you what the in uh, and, and number one uh, again visually the just haunting images certainly the nature of the murder scene at the beginning is just it's burned in all of our minds right like like we can very clearly see it uh, the the this is a a minor stylistic spoiler a minor thematic spoiler on episode two uh, one thing that they don't get into in the first episode Tom is in the second episode. Uh, the Matthew McConaughey character, he uh, uh, has a past in the narcotics division. And as a result, during the time of this happening, has uh, a, a number of, of, of flashback type hallucinations. Like basically, he did a lot of drug, drugs in his previous gig. And so one of the things that happens is he sees these, these, these visual hallucinations. Um, and, and when he's clear to indicate, like he knows that they are just visual hallucinations, he's not under the delusion. Well, he of what has he's one hallucination in episode one. He sees a child by the side of the road, and he turns to Woody Harrelson's character and says, "Do you believe in ghosts?" Oh, I didn't even notice that that was a hallucination. I thought that was an actual. Well, it's child not there. clear whether it is or not, but okay. it's a solo child with no one else around, and he kind of looks at Woody and says, "Do you believe in ghosts?" What? And I got the impression that that was something that he wasn't really seeing. I think you may be talking some advanced stuff, which I'm looking at the measured expression on Andrew Maine that tells me maybe maybe you are. But uh, but uh, the, the hallucinations you see in episode two are in every way. Now, keep in mind, I haven't done any hallucinogens. Uh, I did Ambien a few times, uh, but uh, but but they were the the way that people describe them, where like like stuff moving in waves or 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 patterns in shapes or whatever, which I thought was exquisitely expressed that that was consistent with uh, you know I don't know drug experts. Please tell me whether or not it's as close to what you've experienced. Oh as, yeah, as I, right now. It's <laughs> I'll watch I, episode two and get back to you, but I'll take Andrew's word for it. Again, I think it's going to be one of these things that that we got one more episode. I'm like, I got one more episode. Once it's happened, I if if I if it delivers on the expectations, it's hard to see how they can just consume put it all in one hour. Because remember, this is going to be season one is this story, season two is a restart, something else. I think it's going to be talked about for a long time. I think it's going to be another example of like a high water mark. And I think people who gave up on it are going to be talked into going back into it. And I think it could be a thing where it's going to be one of these, it's, you can't do this in a film. You can't do this on regular broadcast television. It'd be hard to, but to do this in its own form, it becomes its own kind of media. And I think that it could very well be a thing that's 10 now, years from now people are trying to emulate. If you are going to place a bet, Andrew, now we all know that they've said that, look, this is a self-contained story. The next season will be a totally different story. You'll have different characters, different situations, and it's way early to be guessing this kind of thing. But do you think it might be that they're setting up a The Wire type situation where where there's an expectation that everything resets each season, but down the road you see the way everything interconnects with each other? I don't 
No, I think that, you know, if the goal here is from a practical point of view to bring in, you know, Academy Award, Academy Award winning actors like, you know, Matthew McConaughey and the talent that come into there, I don't think that's necessarily a practical. And I, I, I like the idea of just say, hey, we're going to tell you really cool eight episode, you know, every every year we're going to have another different thing like that. I'm fine with that. Rather than try to have this clean little tie it up in a nice little bow, which never works, you know, in things that get too far outside of one story to another. Yeah. Not having seen The Wire. I have, I have to say, The Wire, the first few episodes, everybody says, oh, it's slow. It's so hard to slog through. I really enjoyed that first season anyway. And I feel the same way about True Detective. I understand why people say episode one is slow, and I'm sure I'll feel the same way about episode two. But I was just enjoying watching those characters interact and seeing that scenery and watching those shots. I didn't even really care that much about the mystery. And I sort of do, but I, I was just enjoying the feel of it. And I think if you go into it with that anticipation of like, I'm just going to watch something that looks interesting and sounds cool and is transporting me to another place. That's what they're doing really well here. And that story will build up, I'm guessing, to something that keeps you involved for the rest I mean, of the and these are These guys are, again, Matthew McConaughey, Academy Award winning actor. This is a guy that was coming off, I think, doing you know Dallas Buyers Club, and then he went into production on this. These are people who took this role, decided to do this project because of the acting opportunity. Not for lack of, not that because it was a paycheck thing. It was absolutely, this is furthering their craft. This is a medium they're excited about doing. And that's exciting alone to see it there. Yeah, so, um, man, I'll, I'll tell you what. I What was curious to me as we wrap up, was how much I responded to the look of Louisiana. And uh, keep in mind, I'm somebody who grew up in Southeast Texas, you know, Stone's Throw, done a lot of shows, traveled through Louisiana a lot. They nail the look of all that stuff. Like, like uh, Mordor as Louisiana is no joke. That's oh, exactly what it looks like and sounds and, like. And that's why I love the dialogue. Like the the over the top intellectualism of McConaughey's character when he's talking about this this looks like somebody's idea of a town that's fading away, uh, it's it's so cool and and yet when you start to feel like it's kind of cool but maybe a little pretentious you got Woody Harrelson's character there to bring it down a notch. Wait right wait away. till he gets to in brain theory. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you what. How far do you want to watch into everything, Tom, going into all next week? I now want to watch. <laughs> you just want to see what? if we can get all the way caught up? I don't know. What should, what should we do? No, Because uh, uh, we got promise. South by Southwest this weekend. So, Well, we I, to be honest, you watch one episode and we'll get caught up together you, while you're You guys need, because listen, last episode of True Detectives next Sunday. I know. And you want to be caught up because people All right. will be able to keep their Let's mouth shut. Let's just plow through. This will be this will be our call to everyone. Everybody, get caught up. We're going to talk uh, real time about True Detective next week. And then, uh, are we going to get back into watching Archer now that it's back? Because it it was back this week. Oh, it was. Ah, dag dag damn it. Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure to check it out. We don't have to do that. We could actually let's let focus on True Detective, and then we'll, we'll and catch it will, up then, on we'll then we'll double time uh, Archer. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching Spoiler in Time. Bye, jerks. <laughs>